Hello, my name is Wajaha and today I'm going to cover croup. So croup is an infection of the respiratory tract and eventually can cause inflammation and then airway obstruction. It's caused by viruses and is quite common especially in young children as they have smaller airways and therefore when inflammation of the airways occurs it's more severe. Now in croup the areas uh, mostly affected are the larynx, trachea and bronchi and this picture shows how inflammation can lead to narrowing of the airway and eventually can cause some of the symptoms that I'll mention shortly. Now just quickly mentioning some of the viruses that cause croup. Parainfluenza type 1 is the most common. Um, however there are some others, respiratory syncytial virus and influenza and it's quite important that you remember these. So moving on to the symptoms, uh, there's a triad that I want you all to remember so it's starting off we've got a cough and this is a seal like barking cough we've got stridor which is often known as noisy breathing and we get this because of how air passes through the obstructed airway and it's different to a wheeze which often comes from more lower down in the lung and we also get retractions uh, of the chest or intercostal retractions which is when the muscles in between the ribs pull inwards now these symptoms are more common at night and also 50% of patients may have an associated fever and this fever can come before the cough, the stridor and the retractions as well as the other flu-like symptoms like runny nose and congestion may be present and we can classify these symptoms um, into mild, moderate and severe so mild is essentially just the barking cough moderate with the triad of symptoms that I mentioned severe if you include agitation and fatigue and life-threatening if there's decreased consciousness as well as tachycardia and tachypnea. Now when we see patients like this we often like to do an x-ray of the neck and when we do that we can often see the narrowing of the airway as you can see from the black arrow and this is called steeple sign. Um, we'll also do some observations looking for the oxygen saturations and temperature um, as some patients can have a fever and uh, doing an arterial blood gas is important as well um, as with tachypnea it can lead to high carbon dioxide levels uh, and that can lead to respiratory failure and these are more for the severe category of patients Tr uh, treatment wise it essentially depends on the severity however all patients are given a single dose of dexamethasone um, and that's good enough for the majority of patients now um, other steroids may also be used um, if severe. So as always I try and uh, help you guys come up with ways to remember this all and if there's one thing that I want you all to remember today it's most children cross the croup. So let's break this down. So who gets croup? Children get it and most children when they get croup they often get over this condition without any issues at all. Now breaking down the word cross we've got cough, retractions, one for type 1 parainfluenza and one dose of dexamethasone, steeple sign and stridor and if you remember that you'll essentially be okay answering any question in the exam. So moving on to some questions now. A three-year-old boy is brought into the emergency department with cough and noisy breathing following a three-day history of chorizal symptoms. On examination, he is afebrile but has harsh vibrating noise on inspiration, intercostal recession, and a cough. He is systemically well. What is the most likely causative organism? So, if we, if you have a pause, you can have a go. As I mentioned before, parainfluenza virus type one is the most common. We also remember that some of these other viruses listed can cause croup. And lastly, a 16-month-old girl is reviewed by her GP. She has a three-day history of fever and chorizal symptoms overnight. She has developed a harsh cough. On examination, she has a temperature of 38 degrees and in spiritual stridor is noticed, although there are no signs of intercostal recessions. What is the most likely diagnosis? Uh, although this um, individual doesn't have the triad of symptoms that I mentioned, she has a harsh cough as well as a stridor. Uh, as I mentioned, some patients can get fever, um, and she's got a fever of 38, 30, a temperature of 38 degrees, sorry. And um, she's had some chorizal symptoms, and she fits the age category as well. Uh, and therefore, we do know that this is most likely going to be croup.
that's all I wanted to cover today. Thank you very much for listening. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back with another video soon.